How do you think you match up against the 39-year-old? I think it's a perfect matchup, to be honest. You know, it's going to be the hardest fight of my career thus far. You know, he, like you said, he's a five-time UFC champion. He has knockout power. You know, he's been in there with some of the best fighters and, and is a UFC Hall of Famer. Um, I am just so determined and have been working so hard with my team that anything that he does August 29th, I'm going to have an answer for it. Is there a boxer out there that going into this fight that you emulate, that you're looking at the way, you know, he worked out and he trained in order to get to this fight in Cleveland? You know, I'm inspired by a lot of fighters, the, the Klitschko brothers, uh, Oscar De La Hoya. And, you know, I, I like to fight like Klitschko, use my jab, stay on the outside. Um, and I'm, I'm motivated by the people who doubt me and the people who say, oh, you're not a real fighter, Jake. Oh, we can't wait to see you get knocked out. Because a lot of people tune in uh, to, to see me lose because they, they don't like me. Um, and I use, use that to my advantage in training, and I know that, and it motivates me. The fight is taking place August the 29th in your hometown of Cleveland. Um, is it more pressure, given that scenario, to fight in front of your, your peers? I think it definitely adds a little bit of pressure for sure, you know, because I'm, I'm going to want to perform well. My old wrestling coaches, my old football coaches, you know, they're going to be in attendance uh, watching. And uh, that, that definitely adds a little bit of pressure. But in my career, I've found myself to work good under pressure. And me and my coaches say, no pressure, no diamond. I understand there's a tattoo on the line. Where did this come How did this come about? Yeah, so, uh, the, you know, today at our press conference, uh, Tyrone didn't want to take a bet before that had to do with money. So I was like, okay, let's make a fun little bet. Tyrone, if you lose, you have to get I Love Jake Paul tattooed <laughs> on you somewhere on your body and post it on your Instagram feed. And if you, by chance, happen to beat me, then I have to get I Love Tyrone Woodley tattooed on me. Uh, so the fight just got even more exciting. And we'll see if he's a man of his word because I'm going to beat him and we'll see if he gets the tattoo. Jake, for those that aren't adept in the world of social media, why do you think that boxing has gained such an immense amount of traction in the social media community and, and so quickly? I think the, you know, the generation uh, that's coming up, Gen Z, they love the back and forth. They love the controversy. They love the drama of the fights. And at the end of the day, you know, there's no other sport like boxing, and it's making a big comeback. If you're walking down the street and you see two people fighting, you're going to stop and watch them fight. It's our natural human instinct. And so I think with all these other sports becoming softer and the NFL doesn't want, you know, the crazy tackles anymore, the kids want violence, and, and I think boxing is really the, the outlet right now for that. Thanks to guys like yourself, there has been you know, so much media attention given to the fights um, outside of major boxing sanctioning bodies, but yet there are still fans that are tired of hearing about um, you know, a social media star, a YouTuber turned boxer. What do you have to say to those fans? I would say give it a chance. Like I understand why people wouldn't be open to it at first, but me personally, I'm training just like a real fighter. I'm taking it very seriously. My whole entire life is dedicated to this, from the meals to the recovery to ice baths, sparring, uh, some of the best people in the world. I take it very, very seriously. So yes, I was a YouTuber. Yes, I was on Disney Channel, but now I'm a professional fighter. You had a front row seat recently to the Conor McGregor Poirier fight in Vegas. Uh, I watched it, a lot of us watched it. I want to hear from you, how did you see that fight play out? I saw a man uh, being Conor McGregor who, who is out of his element. It's almost like his act came crumbling down and he's now being exposed uh, for the lack of preparation and I think the lack of commitment he has for the sport anymore. Uh, it's like his time, his time is up almost. You know, Dustin Poirier w was winning the fight and snapped his ankle in half. And I was wearing my Sleepy McGregor chain um, that was almost like a voodoo doll. And that fruition came to life. He was asleep on the canvas after the fight. Did you guys make any eye-to-eye -eye contact at any point that day? So when he first got into the ring, he was like circling around the ring and he like saw me. 
and like stared right at me and like tried to do like a shadow kick in the air. And I looked at my friend, I was like, yo, did he, was he like trying to like say that he was kicking me? And my friend was like, yeah, I'm pretty sure he just looked at you in the eyes and like tried to intimidate you. You had previously offered him $50 million to fight you. Is, is that money still on the table? No, uh, <laughs> my new offer is $23, <laughs> which can buy you 23 McChickens. Uh, so Conor McGregor, look, if you're watching this, man, take it while you can, because who knows, it might drop down to $10 after your next loss. But given the result of the fight and the injury, do you think it's more or less likely that he would take that fight now? I think it's more likely. I think he might see or, or realize that his time is up in, in the fight world, mm -hmm. and he's gonna try to you know, get his last payday. And Conor McGregor versus Jake Paul is probably the biggest fight and the biggest amount of money that, that he could make in this sport right now. Under your occupation, it reads YouTuber, actor, social media influencer, boxer, and rapper. Are you still able to work on all of those things when really your focus right now, I can tell, is boxing? Or does something, what, what takes a back seat? Uh, I think everything besides boxing takes a back seat. Yeah. You know, I still do content, I still post on Instagram, I still do TikToks, uh, but I haven't been able to get in the studio. I haven't been posting as regularly on YouTube. Just because I'm so dedicated to boxing, I truly found what I love, uh, which, which is fighting. And that's what I plan on doing for the next couple of years. How important is it to you to be respected in the boxing community? Or do you care? I, I don't necessarily care. However, all I want to do is add to the sport because I love the sport. I think it's great. And I want to bring more eyeballs and attention so that everyone can grow, everyone can win. Um, and I think the boxing community is starting to see that. And I've been supported by some legends like Mike Tyson, who's you know, been there through my whole journey, supporting me, giving me tips and advice. Um, so there, there are many people who are also like, see the positive things that I'm doing for the sport. Boxing is a family affair, and I know it's been asked before, and I'll ask it um, again. Would you ever consider fighting your brother, Logan? Um, <laughs> <laughs> I, we, we've considered it. We've talked about it. Our parents don't want us to do it. My dad is like, no, 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 absolutely not. But... I think we just might have to settle that. Like, I don't know if we can retire without making that, that happen. I think we both want to know what the result of that fight would be. Mm -hmm. Are the two of you close? Yeah, very close. We're literally neighbors. We spend all of our time together. Um, so it would definitely be a big, like, switch up. We'd, we'd have to train in different places, but who knows what will happen, right? Any plans to fight a ranked boxer? For sure, yeah. Jake Paul versus Canelo Alvarez will happen in the next three years. Uh, he's going in there with guys who are smaller, shorter, and not as, not as good as me. Uh, you know, he, he, he's fighting guys like Yildrum, who's the Turkish warrior who only goes in there for three rounds and barely throws any punches. Uh, so in the next three years, I plan on becoming a world champion, and I plan on beating Canelo Alvarez. One fight at a time, though. August the 29th in Cleveland, Jake Paul versus Tyrone Woodley. How many family and friends uh, have requested tickets for, for August 29th? Like 150 people <laughs> already. And it's only, at your expense, I bet. Yeah, it's only been like 24 hours, so <laughs> I, don't, I don't know what I'm going to do. I'm going to have to buy a bunch of tickets and give them out, so we'll see. Listen, thanks so much for doing this. Really appreciate awesome. the time. Thank you. Appreciate right. it. You got it.